Yeah, so there's a clean out notice for them on the 27th of this month. If they clean out all of their belongings and tents, um, I don't know what they're going to do or where they're supposed to go. Out of the last 10 years, 11 years I've been out here, this has been the best place so far. Yeah, I'd rather deal with the weather, I'd rather deal with natural causes than with the people that are just harassing, you know, I think it feels like harassment that they do. From what I hear, we shouldn't be ground parks because we scare little children. That statement got under my skin. I have a daughter and a granddaughter. I don't think my granddaughter is scared of me. So what I'm seeing now a lot in outreach is uh, these cleanouts of encampments um, and pushing people from one place to another. Um, some people are also being arrested on site for being homeless, which is, you know, they're criminalizing uh, a person for being homeless, and there's no law against being homeless. I mean, there's a lot of good people out here, but there's so many complaining that, of the homeless that they, like, we're bothering them by being here. They want us to go away and not be seen or heard, you know, and then, then, then the problem's solved. But that's not working. Where are we going to go? Where do people go? There's no place to go. I am Eric Montoya. I work for LA Family Housing. I'm an outreach supervisor. Um, been with the organization for 19 years. Uh, Sepulveda Basin is my main area that I work in, which uh, has about, I would say, three to 400 homeless people. There's a lot of pressure to clean the basin out completely. A lot of the people have been out here for, some have been out here for decades, for 10 years plus. It's hard for them to even grasp having to move after 10 years and finding a new spot where they can, you know, be safe and have a sense of community. And so this is known as the bamboos. Um, that's Mark and Sharon's encampment where we're going to go right now. Um, there's, I would say, about 100 people to 150 people living within this area. I've been homeless since about the end of 2008, and it's been a rocky road the whole way, you know. I never thought I'd ever be homeless. I had a business up in Seattle that was doing real well, and then uh, me and my partner, we lost all the business, and lost my house. Uh, everything just went away, just uh, like a snowball effect. It all seemed to happen all at once. Yeah, you can come down and see the camp. It's real tight to come in and out of there, but it's how we live every day. It's like a godsend almost, you know, for us to live like this. I mean, you know. It's better than, yeah, it's better than being under the bridge or behind the dumpster, isn't it? That's why we've been living for about two and a half years now. It's kind of almost embarrassing to show, you know? Oh, I know, because it's not how... It's not our life. I mean, it's not, it's not how we really want to live, you know? We can hardly wait to get into a place and, and then start living like human beings again. We're in the process of getting that apartment, so hopefully that goes through. I can hardly wait. I know it's good. Running it's water. Shower. Shower, bathroom. You know. All um, those things I've taken for granted for so many years, I, I left it in humility. Yeah. <laughs> I see more and more people falling into homelessness. Rents are going sky high. A lot more people that are living in cars and, and vans and trucks, campers. There's a lot of different ways of housing people. There's. Um, you know, we have prevention funds um, for people that are at risk of becoming homeless. Uh, getting people back to family members is something that we try to do. And then there's uh, the vouchers that, that come through the CES system. It's one bedrooms are going for 1500 so it's really, you know, the rents have gone up so high that it's, it, it's hard to place people in housing, um, even with vouchers, with Section 8 vouchers. And then uh, I just ran across another guy who's just sitting there that looks like he needs some water and stuff, so. Octavio, what's going on, brother? So this is Octavio. Um, we met, I would say, what, about like a year ago, maybe? A little over a year. He kept getting pushed from street to street, finally ended up in the Sepulveda Basin at another location that was cleaned out. From there, he went to a different location within the uh, Sepulveda Basin where I found him again, and now he's at his third place. That's my spot right there. Yeah. That's, that's his spot right there. 
And you do this every day. It doesn't, it doesn't help us as outreach workers to have people pushed around and, you know, we lose track of them. They don't have phones. Um, when they do these cleanouts, everything, you know, gets thrown away. So there goes their phone, there goes their ID, there goes everything, and we have to start from scratch. And as we've given them a portable charger for his phone, you know, we don't lose track of each other because we're really close to getting them housed. Now they're going to be cleaning this area out on the 27th. Um, which doesn't leave us much time to find the housing, the appropriate housing um, that's in the works right now. She's at the park? Okay. All right, let's jump in. We'll go to the park. I think Jennifer's at the park. Yeah, Jennifer, the person that we're going to see now, she's like the mother hen of the encampments. She likes to try to provide for everybody. Um, very sweet lady. If you want to bring them on down too, we, I could give them some water and some soup, some crackers, and I got some stuff in the back. She said somebody was hungry, and I said, bring them on over here. I got soup for them, and here you go. All right. Okay. Yeah, not this Monday, next Monday, okay? Yeah, I'll get you guys hooked up right now. I lived in a place in Van Nuys for nine years. I was a single parent. And I took a place that was $725 a month for one bedroom, affordable somewhat. You know, you always struggle when you're a single parent. But I had two jobs to make ends meet. And I lost both, both jobs within three months of each other. And that's why I'm out on the streets, because I couldn't get, I couldn't find work at that time. It just kind of, everything snowballed all at once. Different circumstances may have led to their becoming homeless, but um, you know we're we're here for them, and we're going to continue to be here for them. And everybody's susceptible to it, you know. Shouldn't look at us differently, you know, like we're diseased or like uh, we have some kind of disease on us, you know. But we're all the same, you know. Because we are people, we are citizens, and we should be treated with respect. Anybody out here can be alongside of us any moment, any day. How do we end homelessness? Um, it's going to take a village. It's, it's, it's going to take a lot of people to come forward and, and um, join the fight. To me, permanent supportive housing is the key because of the services that are attached. One person at a time, um, you know, we're, we're going to get we're going to get them housed one way or another gonna make it happen. At least just to understand, you know, understand the the homeless population so that we can break down these 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 barriers, break down the stigma between uh, people that are experiencing homelessness that you know they're all either mentally ill or on drugs, uh, which is not the case. You know I've said this for a lot of, since I've been working there that I'm a paycheck away from being homeless myself and you know so most of most of the people that you know, the work for a living or a paycheck away from being homeless.